All right, let's go and find the axis of symmetry and the vertex of this thing before we start sketching. And first thing I'm going to do is change this format so that it reflects more of our general form right here. So that's going to be one-fifth. And I apologize, there is supposed to be an A there in front. So that would be minus a negative four. That's important for us to know because uh, this form is minus H. And then we have plus three. So our vertex is the H and K values. And down here we can see that H is this negative four and K is this positive three. So I can go and replace the H and the K with their respective values, negative four and three. And that right there gives me one answer is the vertex the next thing I need is the axis of symmetry, which is always x equals whatever the x value is in the vertex. That's negative four. So now I have two answers, but uh, what I'll do is go ahead and graph that vertex and the axis of symmetry, which is a line. Now again, the axis of symmetry is very nice to have because if I can just graph one side of that line, then I can certainly reflect all the other points on the other side without having to solve for those values in the table. I just remember they're the same distance away from the axis of symmetry as the other points are on it that are being reflected with it. So I made my trusty table and I'm going to choose some values of x to try. Uh, again, I want to move towards smaller, easier numbers to work with, so I'm going to be moving to the right of the axis of symmetry. All right, let's see where this gets us. So if x were negative three, I would have negative three plus four, which is one. One times one fifth is one fifth plus three. Uh, that gives us three and a fifth, so that's not really gonna help us, all right? Uh, I mean, we could kind of find something close to that, but if we can find whole values to graph, it's gonna make things a lot easier. So now that I've realized that, I'm gonna go into my table and change the values of my x's that I'm choosing to test in the function in order to find corresponding y values. So I need something to come out that's a multiple of 5. So if I take 1 plus 4, that's 5. That's multiple of 5, even if I square it. So I'm going to say that x is 1. That would be 1 plus 4, which is 5. 5 squared divided by 5 is 5. And then plus 3 is 8. See how nice that was? That's going to give us a very easy point to plot at 1, 8, which would be about right here. And we can see this thing is coming out very wide here. It's, it's opening up widely, which is something we haven't really seen in some of the problems we've been doing. And the reason this is opening up wide is because it's increasing very slowly because of the a value being less than one. And that's that one fit there. So what about some other values of x that we can try? Uh, another one that I would want to try is 10. Uh, I'm sorry, to make that inside the parentheses 10. So that would be where x is six. Six plus four is 10, 10 squared is 100, divided by five is 20, plus three is 23. So 6 and 23, I mean, it's going to be off the graph here, and that's okay. But at least this gives us a pretty good general idea of what's happening. And we can go ahead and graph the points opposite to these on the other side of the axis of symmetry. So now I have a graph that looks like this. That's okay. Uh, of course, on the computers, this is going to look a lot better for you guys because it does most of the work for you. And right there, I'm pretty satisfied with that graph right there. I accept that. And that would, I would call that good. We have our vertex and our axis of symmetry as well.